Okay, so today we are going to take a look at the Wahoo Element Bolt, the updated version. So the super popular bolt, um, this is the newer version. Um, so you open it up the box, you kind of have a little bit of a display for what you're gonna see, um, what sort of information you'll have along with you. And something that's pretty neat about the Wahoo packaging is the way it displays the device for you front and center right there. Take that out. This is the most satisfying part of any electronic device is pulling off the little screen. I kind of like that they made it look like you're riding. Oh, so satisfying. And it'll never be as clean again. <laughs> it'll be covered in sweat, but that's what it's for. It is sweat proof, so don't worry about that. You can see it's got a nice cover on the bottom to, uh, to cover up your charging port, which is USB-C. Super nice to have USB-C charging. Just use one cable for everything. Big, big kudos for them there. And an upgrade from actually their top of the line model, which is the Rome, which uses micro USB. There you go. Rome update incoming for USB-C. TBD. Um, comes with a, a mount. So if you have a round handlebar, you can use this mount, which will Kind of has, it fits into the unique shaping on the back of the Wahoo. Um, if you don't have a round handlebar, then this mount will not clip onto your handlebar. So in my case, I have more of an arrow shaped bar, um, but you can see they give you a couple options. So you have this little adapter that you can just put on top of your stem if you want um, with some of the ties, or uh, an alternative is to just buy a third party Wahoo insert for whatever type of adapter or out front mount you have. So if you have a K-Edge, which is pretty popular, then they sell their own little Wahoo insert for K-Edge for super cheap, I'm talking like a couple of dollars is all. Um, so you'll be able to get that onto your bike and it comes with the charging cable. Then you can get into all the documentation, but we're not gonna worry about that. Uh, just a quick start guide on how to pair everything to your phone. So we'll go ahead and power on the device. While that's powering on, one thing to note with the aero mount is that that's a 31.8 clamp. If you have a 35 millimeter mountain bike handlebar, it will not work. So you'll have to find a different option. Okay, so something here to call out, there is the regular Wahoo Fitness app, and then there's also the Wahoo Element Companion app. So you'll wanna make sure you download this companion app because you won't be able to register and connect your device from the Wahoo Fitness app. Okay, so once you have downloaded the Element app, make sure you enable Bluetooth, and then you're also gonna to need to enable the camera so that you can scan the QR code on the front of the Wahoo device. And just like that, it's now connected to my phone. Confirm the pairing. And if you want to receive notifications between your phone and your Wahoo, then you'll want to allow that now. If you disallow something, you can always go back in to your phone settings and enable it later. So it's just going to think for a minute. And one of the nice things about the way Wahoo sets up their computers is the difference between Garmin and Wahoo. I'd say one of the main differences is you can set all of your settings up from your phone and then it shows up on your device. Whereas with Garmin, you have to set all of your settings up on your device and you kind of lose the easy functionality between just doing it from your phone once. Um, yeah, those you can, the Wahoo actually will also sync in route, on route, I should say. So you could be at a stoplight and decide you want to add a field or take away a field. And that's pretty easy to do. Whereas Garmin, you actually have to go back out and sync your phone, change it, resync your phone. So it's a little bit tedious where Wahoo really makes this very easy to get all of the data exactly as you want it on your phone. Okay, so part of the setup process is you'll be able to connect your Wahoo to your phone and pair it over your home Wi-Fi, which will make updates and syncing routes and all that stuff a little bit faster and easier than waiting for it to always pair over Bluetooth. All right, 
so I will say I've never used the Wahoo computer before, so you're going to go through this setup exactly how I'm going through it if this is your first time using a Wahoo computer. And one of the first options it gives you is to log into some of your favorite connected apps. So for example, if you ride with Strava, and if your ride's not on Strava, it probably didn't happen. Um, so if you want something like Live Segments, if you're a Strava Premium user, then you'll want to sign in to your Strava account now. So you can go ahead and you can change what data is able to be seen between Wahoo and Strava. And if you want to authorize everything, um, go ahead and hit authorize. Otherwise, you can change it later in the settings. So I'll just stick with Strava for now. Um, but if you want to come back to this later, you have a lot of different options. Um, for example, I have a Pioneer power meter. So if I install this Pioneer Cyclosphere app, then it will show me my power phases and metrics similar to how a Garmin vector pedal will show you your different power phases um, right here on the Wahoo screen. So just some cool things to, to call out there. Okay, so the next step here, you'll want to fill out some of your personal data and your height and your weight, um, whether you want to use metric or imperial units, once you fill that out. Um, you can enable live track. Uh, so this is you know, a feature that allows um, you to be seen by others in real time. Um, the caveat being you have to have your phone with you. So if you want to enable live track, you can do that now. And part of that is allowing you to share your email with anybody. So if I go on a ride and I start my live track, then it will send uh, from my email an email to say my wife and she will be able to follow along with where I am as long as I'm in cell service. So next it's going to check for some updates and I suspect there will be a couple updates. Um, specifically Wahoo has added a climbing feature recently which will be on both the Bolt and also the Roam. So that's a really nice update because Wahoo has been just a little bit behind the curve of some like Garmin and Karoo. But with this update, they're now right on par feature-wise with some of the best computers, and it's a welcome, uh, welcome change. Okay, so right here, it's giving me some instructions to go into the settings tab later to manage my maps. So I'll need to go in and download my local maps um, for this computer. And if you travel, so if you go somewhere outside of the country um, or outside of your region, then you'll be able to go back to the settings tab and download the maps for the region that you're traveling to. So this is going to give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to use the Bolt, which for me is super helpful having not used it before. Um, so it shows you, you know, a button here to switch pages to zoom in and out. Then you can use the side buttons. So this is a kind of unique feature to Wahoo where you can have more data fields on your screen or less, and you can easily adjust it with those side buttons. So if you're in the middle of a race and you only want to see your power and your heart rate, then you can easily zoom out and just see those. If you're on a long training ride, then you can add more data fields. Probably one of the coolest, coolest features of Wahoo overall, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. I love that feature. And then easily add sensors. Um, nice to have like a quick action to add a sensor by tapping that power button. Uh, don't hold it though, because that will turn it off. And then the LED indicators. So this is another unique feature to Wahoo that as far as I'm aware, no other cycling computer does or uses. And that is these LED indicators at the top of the device. So you can set that to be uh, paired with your heart rate or with your power meter data, for example. So if you're getting up to the top of your heart rate zone, then these LEDs will indicate that you're near your maximum or same for a power meter, right? You can set your power zones and it will kind of give you an indication there. If you prefer not to train with those metrics, you can also use it for in some of your map and LEDs um, to help indicate turns. Also note, it will connect to the Garmin Varia and you can have that be the indicator for your cars coming up too. Okay, and then last, it's going to kind of walk you through a little bit of how you will look on the map and how to move around in the map. So super helpful if you're lost and you want to kind of figure out how to get home. Lastly, just a little uh, 
legalese to make sure that you're careful and always paying attention while you are writing. And now you can also set a couple of home and work locations, for example. I'm going to skip that for now, um, but it's easy to add to later um, from the settings menu. Then the last thing that's kind of neat is being able to analyze all of your post-ride data right on your phone. Um, you can kind of see from the demo that it's showing, it will show you your different graphs and some of the data that it's recorded, just making it easier to visualize than on the little screen that sometimes you don't see while you're writing. Okay, so if you want to pair some sensors, um, just make sure they're awake and then click the pair sensors button in the app. So if I want to connect my Wahoo heart rate sensor, then boom, easy as that. You're also able to do that on the, on the computer itself if you don't have your phone handy by opening the menu, scrolling up or down to add sensor, and then adding and the same option will pop up for you to be able to connect to the sensor that you want. So now this is the feature that I was talking a little bit about earlier, where you can customize all of your settings, like the pages and the data fields that are displayed right from the phone app, instead of having to try to fiddle with the buttons or a touch screen on the device itself. Um, you can come in and you can choose all of your different data. So you can choose here out of nine fields, Let's say I want the average heart rate per lap to be up here. Then I move it up and you can see the little light indicator on the Wahoo to show that it received that input. If I want to go ahead and show the climbing data and I'd like to see my total ascent at the top, then I can go ahead and easily scroll that to the top. And let's also scroll heart rate up. And so again, you see the little indicator showing that it has been received. Um, if you want to set up your Strava live segments, you can also adjust what data is displayed when a live segment shows up. And if you want to get rid of something entirely, you can just hit the little red icon and delete that field. And you can always add it back in. So don't worry if you've deleted something and you want to try to get it back. Fields are also fully customizable. If you don't like the average or whatever's in there, you just go in and they have a whole number of fields that you can choose from to be able to get exactly the data that you want. And now if we get into some of the other settings here, you can adjust those LEDs like we talked about before um, to show these different options that you have. And also you can customize the sounds and if you connect a barrier radar, for example, you can adjust some of those settings here. You can adjust your backlight. Um, so super helpful if you're trying to save a lot of battery life, you can adjust some of that. Um, same with auto shut off. So if you've ever finished a ride and then forgot to turn off your computer and you go back the next day to ride and it's completely dead, um, this auto shut off feature will make sure that your, your Wahoo turns off, but it won't turn off during a ride. Um, as long as it's recording or paused, then you don't have to worry about it. You can adjust some of your sensor data. Um, so you can include zeros and in average power and cadence. Um, here's where you can adjust that live track functionality and whether you want to show your location to other element users. So if you have a group of friends, that can be fun when you're racing each other. You have some additional map settings here, and then you can adjust auto lap. So if you want it to, to lap every two miles, for example, you can set it by distance, or you can set it by time, depending on your preferences. You can manage your Wi-Fi networks, and also, this is where if you want to see text messages or phone calls as they come across, um, you can adjust all of that here. So it's really easy. It's all from this one page. Um, really not a lot to, to worry about. Um, makes it really easy to find all the different settings that you're looking for. One more unique feature I wanted to talk about from the settings is planned workouts. So you can have some of these preset workouts that are already here um, just in the app. But then you can also import different training plans and workouts from Training Peaks, Today's Plan, Trainer Road, and coming soon, the Wahoo System app will also be able to import those workouts if you, that's the system you use. And here's the Wahoo Roam um, with some of those workouts planned in and saved to the device already. So here's uh, what an example of one of those workouts on the Wahoo Roam looks like. 
So you can see it has your data fields, which are customizable at the top. Um, it shows you how many intervals and how many remaining you have. Then at the bottom, it kind of shows you a graph similar to if you've used a training platform before. Um, gives you an estimate on the power and the zones that you'll be doing. So here on the table, I have the Wahoo Bolt, the Garmin Edge 830, and the Wahoo Roam. The Garmin 830 and 530 are both the same size, but are smaller than the 130. And you can kind of see how the screen sizes compare. So the Bolt is a little bit smaller. Um, the device itself is also a little bit smaller. Um, Thickness-wise, a tiny bit thicker than the Garmin, but not drastically. Um, you can see they're pretty similar in size, um, the screen being a little bit smaller, but both are smaller than the Wahoo Roam. So if you want that larger screen size than the Wahoo Roam, definitely provides a few more data fields. You can kind of see how it compares with the just the default data fields having a little bit more. You can not only have nine on the Bolt, but you can have a few extra on the Roam. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. And then let's also go ahead and just take a look at the different weights of these devices. So the Wahoo Bolt is 69 grams. Nice. The Garmin Edge 830 is 81 grams. And the Wahoo Roam is the heaviest of the three at 97 grams. But in the scheme of things, not a huge difference in weight between them. Um, battery life is also pretty good on all three devices. Um, they'll get you through any long ride without a, without an issue, especially if you have that backlight set to auto. If you have your backlight set to always on um, for any of these devices, then you'll see less battery life as opposed to auto. Okay, so I wanted to kind of show how this mount clips in. And the neat thing about it is how integrated it is. So you can see that creates just a super nice aerodynamic profile, um, which will smooth the airflow out a little bit. The other really cool thing is this little itty bitty bolt um, which will secure it in to your device. And that means if you happen to be racing, um, one, if you crash, your computer won't go flying away because it's secured right here. But two, um, if you're in an event where they weigh your bike, because your computer is actually fixed to your computer with a bolt, it can be included in your overall bike weight. So if you have a bike that you're trying to get to that 15 pound mark, and it's actually lighter than it's supposed to be, you can actually include your computer weight with this little bolt here. So that's kind of a neat thing that you can't do with any other computer. Lastly, I wanted to take a quick look at the side-by-side -side view of the Wahoo Bolt to the Garmin Edge 830. And for just for comparison's sakes, I've gone ahead and I've put the same fields next to each other so you can kind of see how the screens differ. On the Wahoo, you can see the colors that I was mentioning earlier, which is super helpful to just view at a glance. You can see the, the three second average, um, the blue color there really lets you know which zone you're in compared to the Edge 830 screen where it's all just one color. And then same for the heart rate, right? So I can compare my, my power zone to my heart rate zone pretty quickly, um, just at a glance. And on the Edge 830, the, the numbers might be a little bit bigger overall for the the two main fields that you see. Um, the one main field on the Wahoo is going to be the most prominent and also has the largest number text font size. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom out on the screen. So this is what I was talking about earlier with the ability to zoom in and zoom out. So if you want to see more data fields, so even though we haven't changed pages at all by using these zoom buttons, you can see more data fields or you can see less data fields. So if I'm really pushing hard and I only wanna see power or I only wanna see my power and my heart rate, you can adjust it to be like that. Or if you just wanna keep it simple, you know, you can have three data fields. Um, it's really nice not having to always change your page to see more or less information, um, especially if you're in a race scenario where you don't really care about those other ones during the race. It's not a training ride. You really only care about maybe these three main metrics. Uh, really helpful to be able to see that sort of information there. With that, guys, thanks for watching, and, you know, I'm excited to try out the Bolt a little bit more, and as we go through it, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks.